Okay. Atomic ceased to go. Good day. The following footage was collected on the late morning of Saturday, October 23rd, 2021. In the waning first winter moon, he thought story when cold arrives. And what you're looking at here are, of course, a couple of Miksikatsi couples, mallard duck couples, out on the water at Shpopikimi. It was a rainy, uh, kind of cold, windy morning, so I decided just to collect some footage and not to try to narrate on site, but to uh, do something after the fact, like today, Sunday morning, <laughs> in my uh, dining room. So yeah, I'm just going to show you a little bit of what's up at Shpobikimi. As of yesterday, you can see the waters are much higher than they were two weeks ago not all owing to rain there was some kind of swell in the river and i don't know exactly what caused that but the waters definitely have gone up a bit from where they were they're still not that high though here we're going to take a look at some of the mallard couples because i don't want to just like walk around my site and say there's that and there's this you know just to have seen them i want to ask the question you know it's like what are they doing and uh, try to take a look. Now one of the behaviors that I notice is that they're all in couples. And this one, this particular couple is not even mallards. This is uh, American widgeons, um, who are really the last ones that I ever see migrate out of the pond and migrate back into the pond uh, at the beginning of the summer season. So they're kind of the, like the, the last ones out the waters before they freeze, in my experience. So just taking a look at them here. But yeah, I noticed that uh, most of the ducks were in couples rather than in summer families, for instance. And I don't know if these are the guys that are going to be sticking around or what. In this morning's walk, my, my regular Sunday morning walk and talk, I had a good question from my student, Kara, which I don't know the answer to. Uh, she, I was asking about the, the geese, the Canada geese, so-called Canada geese here, and the uh, opspinny, the white chins, and whether or not um, it's the longer neck ones, species that stay here, subspecies, or the shorter, or both, I don't for the winter, and I don't know the answer to that. Here you can see the, the beaver food cache has grown quite a bit. And I'm looking at the lodge itself, the main lodge being almost completely uh, up on land again still, right? Even though the waters are higher than they were two weeks ago, they're still at their lowest point uh, that I've ever seen them going into a winter. And I imagine that main lodge is, is abandoned at this point uh, as far as habitation, that they're all in what, what was their scent mound at one point. Here we're taking a look at the winter food cache and it, it appears to be mostly made up of bulrush although I know that there's always like I can see there there's some choke cherry mixed in there for sure and uh, I, from studies previous winters I know there's probably a lot of other things as well the pathways are still littered with all of the poplar
here is a new pathway that I discovered coming up from the peninsula. And I just walked over the, the levee to take a look at it. Uh, it's kind of a crisscross shape down to the water. And I, I expected or I suspected deer at first, but as I looked at it, I thought, no, nah, it goes right to the water. It's got to be beaver. Um, so I started looking at what were they doing up here, right? I didn't see a, another path uh, through the vegetation on the other side of this trail. And so walking down the trail, though, I start to find some of the evidence of what they were up to. And it looks to me as though they were uh, checking out the absent uh, as a potential food source. Many stems of these larger absent plants were broken at the base. So they were just collected, but they weren't collected. And there were several of these plants along the trail that had been obviously visited. This one got me interested because I, I could see how many of the stems were split. And I started thinking, I wonder if the beavers were actually not here to collect the stems, but the, but the pit. Anyway, I've seen the beaver collect the absinthe roots, never stems. Decided this morning not to uh, walk up as I normally would under the bridge, but to just circle around on the regular levee path, just navigating around the pond for the most part. And uh, here I'm just kind of looking at a new path. It's not a new trail, but they put some new surfacing on the trail in the last week or two. Uh, the city has it's kind of a harder uh, rock, almost asphalt surfacing. And, uh, I don't like it for, you know, just because it's a change, and I also don't like it because uh, it's a bare foot runner. Anything rocky like that is Here I am looking at a couple of, um, or some black cap chickadees, the ones that I could hear in the trees. And it's funny because this is a take two of this scene actually. And I was, as I was walking past these trees in the forest, I was noting to take one out, know, the absence of bird songs. And then, the, and then these chickadees start singing. And I was like, oh, I have to take that. Maybe I get the chickadees in it. They're singing. And uh, I'm talking about them. Little more than a year later. Okay. And 
and I wondered at first whether it was people doing it. I saw several trees with exposures that hadn't been exposed like that. But uh, just going to kind of investigate, you know, like this tree here, I could see that uh, the bark strip that had come off just kind of fell off. Thank you. 